Hi, this is Linear Algebra. We're going to deal with 1.4 and talk about the matrix and solving with AX is equal to B. First of all, some background. We want to do some matrix multiplication. And they go about it a little bit funny with this in section 2. We'll get into it more thoroughly. But they want to look at both the vector form and the matrix form of these uh, setups that we do have. So we want to multiply the given matrices and pay attention to rows and columns and the proper dimensions when we do multiply. So number one here, we have the row matrix, one, two, three, and we're going to multiply it by the column matrix X, Y, Z. What we do is the left matrix, we always want to go across, and the right matrix, we always want to go down. So we can highlight those as such. So when we multiply, all we're going to do is take the respective pieces of the row matrix and multiply them by the respective pieces in the column matrix. So this is just going to be 1x plus 2y plus 3z. So 1, 2, 3, and respectively 1, 2, 3. We just multiply the respective pieces together. That's all we're doing. So if we look at number two, well, what's the problem here? Well, if you notice when we go across there, we're going to end up with four items. And when we go down, we end up with three items. The dimensions will not match up. And so when we multiply these things, the, the dimensions of the first side row has to match up with the column that we do have. And we do not have that match right now. So when we write the uh, matrix multiplication, these two numbers on the inside have to match up. So this left matrix is a 1 by 4. This right matrix is a 3 by 1. These two not, do not match up, and so we cannot multiply. So we don't have any answer for that one. So now look at number 3. Number 3, we add another row. And so we do have what we would call a 2 by 3 and we're going to multiply it by a 3 by 1. Now, if you look at this, these two do match up. And so our resulting matrix will turn out to be whatever happens when we X those two off. And so we're going to end up with a 2 by 1 as our final answer. And we'll show you how this works now. So I'm going to go ahead and take this first row and multiply it by the column that I do have. So it's going to give me 1x plus 2y plus 3z, just as we did in the first example. And I should have put this in a matrix form. Sorry about that. That's just one term in the matrix form. That is row 1 and column 1 of this new vector. And we said that it's going to be a 2 by 1. So now what I need is I need to find out what happens when I take the second row of the first matrix and then go ahead and multiply by this column matrix. I'm not going to get any x term here, but I will get a negative 2y, and I'm going to get a plus z. This is a 2 by 1 matrix, two rows and one column. Even though I got the many terms, it's just one term as I go down here, okay? So that's the result that we do have. This is the matrix form that we do end up with. Now we also wanna look at a vector form. The vector form's a little bit different because the vectors that we do have that we talked about in the last unit are all of these column vectors that we do have in that first matrix. So the other way I can write this is in vector form. So I can take my x and multiply by one zero. So that is just my first column. And then I'm going to go plus y, and then that would be the 2 and the negative 2. And then I'm going to have the z, and I'm going to multiply it by the 3 and the 1. So this is a way to write this in vector form. Now notice these two are equivalent. They're just written in a little bit different forms. One's vector form, one's matrix form. Okay, so and that's the big difference with this unit is making sure you understand the difference between the two, but they are equivalent. So we'll show you more of the matrix form and vector form in the example ahead. So what we can have is writing equations, and we want to look at writing equations. Ax is equal to b. 
Now, A is a matrix, and X are the variables that we do have. Now, A is a matrix of vectors. So all of these, they should be bold, the A's here, because they are vectors. And they are representative of column vectors. So even though you don't see this here, there's many different numbers in this a1, a2, a n. And so when we multiply those by my x's, this x right here represents x1, x2, all the way up to xn. So how we can write this is in our vector form with x1 times a1, x2 times a2, and xn, oh, da, 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 plus xn times the a sub n, right? So an example of how this is written in linear combination would be in this form right here, where these are your vectors that you do have, okay? Now the solution set to this will be the same thing as if you put it into an augmented matrix. So theorem three states that if A is an M by N matrix with columns A1, A2, up to AN, and if B is in our M, the matrix equation A equals B has the same solution set as the vector equation that we have there, which in turn has the same solution set of the linear equations whose augmented matrix is this right here. So this is pretty powerful linking the vector form into our augmented matrix. So now let's see this set up in an example. So if we look at this example here, compute AX equal to B, where the matrix A, and so this is a matrix, and then I have all of these vectors that form it. And then x is equal to x1, x2, x3 in a column. And then b is equal to 0, negative 1, 2. So if I want to set this up, what I do is I can go two ways. So if I do it in vector form, I can write it as such. 1, 0, 3. And then x2, 2, 2, 2. And then x3, negative 3, 1, negative two. And I'm just gonna stop there for AX. Okay, so this is representative of AX. And if I do this with the, and so this is vector form. And then if I do this with matrix form, I'm gonna end up with what's here in the purple. And because I'm going to go ahead and take my row again, remember how we go across with these, and then we're gonna go down with that, and this is a dimension three by three. This is dimension three by one. So I'm gonna end up with a three by one. And that's what this one is right here is a three by one, right there, okay? So that's just A times X. If I wanna put this then into an augmented matrix, that would be another step. And then I would end up with having this as one, two, negative three, 0, 2, 1, 3, 2, negative 2, and then I just got to put in my B. So my B is going to be my 0, negative 1, 2. So if I ask to solve the solution for any one of these, then I can go ahead and solve this matrix right here by doing redu reduced row echelon form, which I did do right here. And we solve it out, and we get x1 is equal to 1, x2 is equal to negative 1 half, and x3 is equal to 0. Okay, so that's different ways to look at exactly the same thing. And I just did these on my calculator. In fact, you can do the matrix form on your calculator. And so this is my three by three here times a three by one. And I'm going to get a three by one as my result. So lastly, what's kind of cool now is I can take uh, this setup right here, the linear combination setup that I do have right here, and I can put in my solutions now that I did find from this matrix. So here's my linear combination with my answer solutions that I did put in there as well. All right? All right. Okay, so some additional things that we have here. Identity matrix, this is quite important. Identity matrix has ones along the main, main diagonal. And so we got one, one, one down there if this is an example in R3. This is what we call the identity matrix because if I multiply by this, any, um, any matrix that will allow me to multiply by a three by three, I'm just going to get that same matrix back. Okay, so that's important to know. 
Now, some other things. Existence of solutions for AX equal to B. If A is an M by N matrix, then the following statements are equivalent. So either all of these are true or all of these are false. So for each B in RM, the equation AX equals B has a solution. So if we have a solution, then we also know that each B in RM is a linear combination of the columns of A. So you can write those as a combination of what we have then the columns of A span RM. And we'll have to talk about that a little bit more in class. And then A has a pivot position in every row. Okay. Then also properties of these matrices, we can do, it's kind of distributed property, but you got to keep the order correct. So the matrix A is on the left-hand side for both of these. And then A times some constant C, scalar, times a vector U, then we can switch these things around. Okay, so those are some properties that do hold true. All right, I, we'll talk about some of these more in class, but ultimately uh, check out the book and the readings in there too, and that will help you as well. All right, this is section 1.4. This should say 4 down here. 1.4, and the gift is listed there. Have a great day.